Well, we've got one more lore piece to get to tonight. All right, I'm very this. excited about this one. Uh, this kind of fills in some questions we had following the events of last season. This is kind of a uh, an addendum to Season of the Chosen. It's called Empty Vessel. This is the uh, Vanguard Grenade Launcher. So we've we've gone through the three special weapon, the three new weapons for this season because it's the stuff that doesn't deal quite with the season. We want to do that as we go along with the lore books, but. It's versatile. By itself, it's nothing, just an empty tube. But that's deceptive beauty. It's all about what you fill it with, what you make it, what you make it do. Banshee 44. Armored boots clank down the metal stairs as Lord Saladin descends the catwalks between the central tower. The bazaar is otherwise quiet, giving him time to contemplate the strategy needed for his impending diplomatic liaison. I demand a place in the decision-making for... Saladin trails off in thought as he walks. I request addition to your counsel for... He grunts, shaking his head. Commander, I'm concerned about your inclusion of future war cult in... A grumble. None of it sounds right. Saladin paused to look out over the city. The streets are hidden behind a shimmering pall of digital fog. He closed his eyes, shaked his head, and takes a moment to compose himself. There are no sounds of fighting here. No gunshots, no screams. Those exist only in his mind. Zavala, I would like to speak to you as a friend. Saladin tries again, then opens his eyes to the traveler with an affirming nod. You'll have to speak a little louder if you'd like the commander to hear you. The sudden intrusion of a voice not his own wheels Saladin around, catching Osiris uncomfortably close behind him. Saladin's expression shifts from shock to embarrassment, concealed beneath a mask of frustration. It's unbecoming of you to eavesdrop, warlock. Please, Osiris dismisses, slowly approaching Saladin. Anyone with an ear could hear you mumbling to yourself. I just happened to comment on it. He gestures with an open hand and clasps both behind his back. I have a meeting to attend, Saladin insists, turning to make an abrupt exit. Osiris sidesteps, getting between Saladin and the stairs, and elicits an immediate look of challenge from the Iron Lord. Osiris mindfully raises both his hands. Please, Lord Saladin, a moment... Saladin crosses his arms over his chest. Impatience shows a crease in his brow. Now may not be the best time if you're hoping to find an ally in the commander, Osiris explains, as he places a guiding hand on Saladin's elbow, drawing him away from the main walkway. Commander Zavala is under considerable stress at the moment, Osiris continues. While you might see your presence as a reinforcing one, he raises his brows, glancing sidelong at Saladin. You may not be correct in that assertion. Stop talking in circles. Saladin planted his feet. What is it you're getting at? When was the last time you, to put it as you did earlier, eavesdropped? Saladin rankles. I do not eavesdrop, he growls. Then perhaps that is why you do not realize what the overall opinion of your actions are in the eyes of other guardians. Osiris's tone is gentle and apologetic. Measured. It conveys an obvious tone. This news is bad, and he hates to be the bearer of bad news. Saladin is quiet. Osiris sees the lack of outward defiance as a foothold. He digs in. Many are without our shared convictions have questioned your leadership decisions during the recent crisis with Empress Keitel. Osiris dips his head in close to Saladin, voice hushed as if to share a secret. Others suggest that it was you who ordered the assassination attempt on the commander. An Iron Lord would never, Saladin says with a... Uh, a quiver in his voice. I am not, I know. Osiris is quick to softly interject, but not everyone knows you like I do. They make well-articulated and convincing arguments based off of your very vocal stance against an armistice with the Cabal. Closing his eyes, Saladin draws in a slow and calming breath. The sounds of gunfire, shouts, and screams are louder now than ever before. Or maybe it's the blood pounding in his ears. All the more reason for me to set the record straight. Is that what you came to the city for? Set a record straight? Osiris presses. Just a moment ago, it sounded to me like you wished to ask for a place in Zavala's inner circle. How do you think that might look? Saladin looks in the direction of Zavala's office, hands curling in the fists. Lakshmi, too, is, let me handle Lakshmi, Osiris insists, once more reaching out a hand for Saladin's arm. This time, the Iron Lord doesn't pull away. Fight the battles you know you can win, Lord Saladin. I know how to handle her. There may come a time when your strength will be needed again, but that time's not now. Saladin looks sharply to Osiris. A rebuttal forms behind his lips, but is never spoken aloud. He lets his head hang. Thank you, Osiris, Saladin says with a heavy heart, conviction flagging. 
You are a true friend. I find this very curious. Mm-hmm. That Osiris is preventing Saladin from reconciling with Zavala. Because Z- Zavala, Shax, and Saladin famously do not get along. Mm-hmm. And they haven't since Twilight Gap. And for Saladin to be the one making the move to go and try and reconcile with Zavala is a gigantic step. Mm-hmm. Mending that. Uh, it's, been, it's kind of been hinted that Zavala wants to, <clears throat> and he is on better terms with Shax than he is with Saladin. Yeah. Uh, Saladin historically separated from the other Titans. Yeah. I, uh, as an yeah. I, I'm an Iron Lord. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. You're all dead anyways. It's like him and us are the only ones left. <laughs> and what, Ephrodite? Is she Ephrodite is hanging fucking out somewhere? Off somewhere. Yeah, she's, she's fucking around somewhere. We don't even know where she is right now. She's been missing since Rise of Iron. She 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 doesn't care about the, the Titan drama. She's off snowboarding on the mountain. That's why that Titan uh, thing exists in Eververse. I do wonder if this hints towards something happening to Saladin. Yeah. Um, with him being brought into the main narrative, for, again, uh, another character that has never been part of the main narrative, it suddenly was brought in during Chosen. Yeah. And in kind of a big way. You know, he was one of the people who was really talking to us through that war table, and he had a very notably different stance than Osiris did on mm-hmm. all of this. Yeah. Than Osiris and Zavala. And for him to want to be part of Zavala's inner circle, because you figure Zavala's inner circle is likely, it's him, Ikora, they've brought Osiris into it. Mm-hmm. One could wager they might be consulting Shax and Saint at this point, but for, they're probably on the outside looking in. For Saladin to be wanting a seat at the table is pretty major, mm-hmm. but it's clear Osiris wants to keep them separated. For what end, I don't know, but this doesn't, I don't feel like this is the Osiris that we've come to know. I'm wondering if something happened to, if something really did happen to him. Because remember, we got all that lore about him before Beyond Light dropped, including where he went out to where the pyramid ships were. And when he came back to his ship, he was noted by Segura to be different. Yeah. Oh, something had to have happened to him. Like maybe he like, maybe he got corrupted a little bit by the darkness or something, or maybe he's just scared now because. His ghost is gone. I think I do. I definitely think that losing Segura affected him a lot more than he's let on. Yeah. And I think it's going to cause him to act a little reckless eventually. Yeah. It's clear that Osiris is a major part of this whole, uh, this whole year's storyline. Yeah. Between hunt uh, with hunt chosen and now splicer and bringing, even bringing crow into the fold. Yep. You know, like that was a huge, huge story moment. And like, I wonder, I wonder if Osiris is prepping Crow to be like, I know we've been kind of talking about this for a long time, but Crow being the the hunter Vanguard and like Osiris kind of sacrificing himself to save Crow so he can take over at some point. I, I'm, I'm curious as well if that'll happen. Um, or if Osiris is just going to flat out embrace the darkness at some point. Yeah. Um, I do feel like that is probably coming sooner rather than later just to have powers again. Yeah. Cause he, he was one of the most powerful guardians to ever live, if not the most powerful. Mm-hmm. And even he lost his light to Zevo Arath's knights. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I even just, the, even the Vex being part of this storyline, right? This, mm-hmm. this season storyline, like he's so obsessed with the Vex and I wonder if at the end of the last season of the expansion, like he's just going to sacrifice himself to stop a Vex simulation or something. I think that if Osiris dies, it's going to be in, because I do, I do think that they're going to start trimming the ranks of our supporting characters. Now yeah, that everybody's there's kind of getting so a many the now, there are so many. I, I think they want to curate it, especially like if you really are going for like an Avengers assemble moment, Sabathun is going to be probably when that happens. And we mm-hmm. still know there's two, expansions after that i was talking about this last night and i really think like with us allying with at least the house of light and mithrax desperately trying to bring the rest of the fallen under his banner mm-hmm. and keitel trying to get the remnants of the cabal because they're near extinction as well to come under her banner and be allies with the city 
well, tentatively allies with the city. I think she'll fully turn on us the second Savathun is beaten. Yeah. Um, you think Savathun's going to survive the Witch Queen expansion? Oh, God, no. I then, think what's going to happen is we're going to find out the real power behind the Hive and behind Savathun. I think they introduced the Veil in that raid. <laughs> or in the storyline. Yeah. I I think you have to introduce them as the yeah. final enemies because why else would you need two more expansions? Yeah, what if it's like the last season leading into Lightfall? They introduce them kind of like they did with the pyramids. I think it's got to come before then. I think we're going to start getting teases before Sabathun. You think? I, I think so because otherwise you've got another entire expansion of just hive and taken enemies yeah. and vex. Like you, you've got to have something else to kind of sustain you, and that can be part of the mystery for the next year. Like, yeah. because it's clear they want to do big lore events in these seasons now. It's not just oh, there's going to be some background stuff. Go read up on it, and a little fun event to do. Like, no, they're doing major story beats. Zavala almost got assassinated. We aligned with Callus's daughter after proving ourselves to her. Mm-hmm. We've got a Vex simulation taking over the city right now. The future war cult is here for the first time ever in the actual storyline. Mm-hmm. We've got Fallen in the city. We've got Mithrax. Or I thought Mithrax would be introduced in uh, an expansion. I didn't think he was coming in in a season. Yeah, that shocked me. That when he didn't come in in Beyond Light, I was like, I was surprised. I was like, I thought that this was a given. I almost feel like the last. Lot. I feel, almost feel like this season. It, like so far in last season are bigger storylines than the beyond light main campaign expansion almost, or at least th- on that I th- level. I, th- I think to a degree they are um, because yeah, we may not have had like this massive enemy, but what Aramis attempted to do in beyond light actually does have a lot of significance in the lore. That was one of the major catalysts for Anna's dark view fu- Anna and Elsie's dark future. Right. Is was Aramis, getting stasis and leading an attack on the city mm-hmm. with who the cabal and the cabal were going to be there. Sabathun was going to be there and the Vex were going to be there. Mm-hmm. Like all four factions were going to be attacking us at once. We've successfully repelled Aramis. The mm-hmm. cabal have been repelled. The Vex will be repelled by the end of the season. That still means we're going to fail at some point. Probably. Yeah. The helm is too constructed at this point for me to not think that it's going to be our new main social space. Because yeah. you've got the Fallen in their corner, give another corner to the Cabal eventually, yeah. and then bring your vendors and have them stand around the table like the old days. Yeah. You know, you've got Crow in the back of the ship. It, it is very clearly a ship. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a catch docked in, or I don't, I don't know if it's a catch, but there there's a little Fallen ship that's docked in the helm. Yeah. Like, that's so cool to see. Like, you can see him working on it. You've got a giant servitor there. Like, I, I don't know what you necessarily do, but I do think at some point the helm is taking off. Uh-huh. And I ask if Dead Orbit is involved in that. Now that we have the factions coming to, we have to start wondering this. Mm-hmm. Is Dead Orbit somehow involved in the creation of this? Because their thing is leave the planet for the stars. Right. right. That's Dead Orbit. Like, we're fighting a losing war here. We need to leave. Like, how ironic would it be that the space goths are the one that save us in the end? <laughs> uh, That's long been a theory of mine, is that they have a secret fleet constructed, because Dead Orbit does have a ton of ships. Mm-hmm. They are the ones who evacuated people from the city during the Red War. Right, right. You know, that caused them to live, and they hung out in space until it was safe to come back. Mm-hmm. So, is, does that happen again? You know, where where do we go from here? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, there's, a, there's a lot to ponder here. There's a lot more intriguing lore. Um, next week, we're going to start getting into the weapons and the armor of this season, which just has... Uh, I don't know if the armor does, but I know that at least the weapons have some really intriguing storylines. And again, some of these we're going to save. The stuff about Lakshmi, I want to start saving. Yeah. yeah. Um, because there's... At some point, we're going to have to do a dive on her. She's, she's fucking nuts. Yeah. yeah. If you listen to any of the dialogue uh, oh, yeah. in the overrides in the tower, she she's fucking nuts. Like something's going to have to happen with her eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, because she is, yeah, cuckoo cuckoo for cocoa puffs. And I really hope that it's Saint that like punches her in the face. Mm-hmm. So, but that's going to conclude Lore Corner tonight. Uh, that's kind of a long one. I know we got multiple weapons. It's the beginning of new season. We got a lot of stuff. We got to pick and choose here, but. It's kind of the set that's for where we're going with some of these main characters that might not have a lot of dialogue right now, but 
the narrative team is killing it over here with the writing. Yeah, every time we t- every time we do lore corner, especially like something that has to do with this season, and then we start speculating about what's coming. It just I could do a whole another two hours on that easily. Oh, easily, easily. Uh, man, I love lore corner, Josh. I love. It. I do too. It's, it's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> uh, it's the best part of the show. It is. You're the-